Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. Nemo assists several residents who fled their homes in the aftermath of heavy rains. The Ministry of Health holds broad based consultations on COVID vaccination. And the CARICOM member states to provide assistance to earthquake stricken Haiti. Torrential rains on the weekend have caused landslides and damage to homes in a number of communities. On Friday 20th August, there was widespread flooding in the city center as conditions associated with a tropical wave intensified. Doreen Gustav, director of the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, appearing on the Morning Brew on the national television network, said NEMO received emergency reports concerning Marigot, Bocage, Tiroche, and Soufre. We did receive calls from individuals whose, um, whose property was partially or, or totally destroyed. We had one instance again in the Bocage area. We have one in Marigo where the home was totally destroyed. And just this morning I received a call from the Tiroche area where there is a house that is um, at present moving due to the rainfall and a landslide nearby. Um, we are continuing to receive reports. We saw um, reports from Soufre, where the Columbet area is impassable due to a major landslide in that area. Um, our district disaster committee is uh, continuing to send, send in the reports as they receive them, and they will be continuing throughout the day. As damage assessments continue, the island is forecast to experience more rains from the intertropical convergence zone. The pending rains, Gustav says, can impact Nemo's response to the affected families. The one in Bocage, the family cannot go back into the house at all because the landslide came to the back and pushed the house off its, its pillars. Um, so they cannot not, um, access that house at all. All of, the pro all of the property, everything is in there still. So we have assisted them. A neighbor took them in um, rent-free for a month. And um, we assisted them with um, a few mattresses, um, some bedding, um, and some food items to assist them in the period that they will be, uh, at least for now. We will be continuing um, to liaise with them to find out how um, we could continue to offer that kind of support to them. The Nemo director says the public can assist in recuperation efforts through the donation of mattresses. After the passage of um, Hurricane Elsa, we have assisted a number of families with mattresses. As you would know, it was a lot of roof damage, um, mattresses, beddings. We have given a number of these out. Um, we are short on them now. Um, we're expecting to get a few more, but right now we're short on them. We are, are trying to, to get donations in that regard. So anyone who can assist, we will gladly. Anyone wishing to contribute to the efforts of the National Emergency Management Organization can call 468 2121 or 452 3802. And as you heard earlier, more rains are expected to affect the island. Director of Med Services Andre Joye has more on that. Any rainfall occurring today would cause um, flooding because of the saturation of the soils. And the models are showing that we are expecting a tropical wave to go through by tomorrow. But ahead of it, we, we will be having some um, instability and that would cause showers um, from this afternoon into tonight. So persons in low-lying areas and flood-prone areas, please um, take the necessary precautions like uh, Ms your waterways, uh, make sure that they are clear. And um, if you need to move to higher ground, please do so. In other developments, the Cabinet of Ministers will this week receive recommendations coming out of the recently held National COVID-19 Vaccination Policy Consultation. The forum drew participation from the public and private sectors, medical practitioners, non-governmental organizations, trade union representatives, the Employers' Federation, the SLHTA, among other entities. 
The forum discussed issues surrounding vaccines, vaccination, and the legal implications. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs on Thursday held a national vaccination policy consultation. The consultation brought together professionals of various areas, including that of the medical and legal fields, with a view of analyzing the current COVID-19 situation and exploring available options so as to effectively combat the pandemic. Dean of Law at the University of the West Indies, Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine, explained that the best option would be for a country to employ a voluntary vaccination scheme accompanied by the required education and persuasion rather than a mandatory vaccination scheme. The government of St. Lucia has clearly stated that it will not go the mandatory vaccination route and will respect the rights of citizens to choose. However, in the wider Caribbean, there have been discussions on whether government should mandate vaccination to resume some sense of normalcy. Professor Bel Antoine said such a mandate is supported by law. I would say to you that yes, the legal framework does support compulsory vaccination or mandatory vaccination. Whether we're looking at the constitution, the public law sector, or whether we're looking at it from the point of view of the private law um, sector. And so the first thing in, in terms of our constitutions would be to appreciate that our constitutions would look at what is reasonably required in the particular context. And of course, this context, as you have heard, is one of great risk. Lives are being threatened by COVID. So is it reasonable then with the seriousness of this pandemic is compelling vaccination a reasonable option? Yes. And I would also suggest that we want to add to that because of how we see how law is developed, how cases are being developed. Is it a proportionate response? In other words, is there something else we can do that would be just as effective? And the things, the other things that we have been doing are the PPE, etc. So it would be, is it that we have tried all of these other methods and, and persons still don't want to vaccinate? then it means that we are getting to that idea that it's a proportionate response. That is a principle of law which um, comes into being in this instance. The Dean of Law indicated that the court would use established science to determine its legal position and not conspiracies or unproven theories. She further explained that the rights of all individuals will be considered in such instances and not just that of those who are or are not vaccinated, those who wish to be vaccinated, those who wish to remain unvaccinated, and those who want to be but are unable to be vaccinated due to medical issues. Everyone's rights must be taken into consideration, as according to Professor Bell Antoine, rights are not absolute and do not exist in a vacuum. And in fact, if we look at, at your constitution, the St. Lucia constitution, you will see not only does it speak to reasonableness, reasonably required in the interest of the society, but also it talks specifically not just of the public interest in, in, in health, as was mentioned before, but also it specifically mentions public health as an, a, an avenue for limiting rights in the public interest. So that is not so in all constitutions, but in your constitution, public health is specifically mentioned. And what is even more interesting and what's make it, what makes it even more plausible in terms of a, an adequate legal response for compulsory vaccination is that the Sindhusian constitution also specifically mentions infectious disease. Dean of Law, Professor Bell Antoine, advised that the exploration of legal avenues is not hard and fast and should only come into play after all avenues have been exhausted. Individuals the world over have expressed their concerns and or reasons as to why they continue to refrain from taking the COVID-19 vaccine. The Dean of Law examined one such reason. Um, I understand that the COVID one might be a bit different in that many people have concerns about it being for emergency use or experimental use. But the courts, again, have looked at these issues. In the Bridges case, for example, they have not found it persuasive. 
this notion of experimental because we've had scientific trials and so on and because it's been declared safe. So that has not been a very um, important deterrent to any court saying that because of that, you can't compel. It is still going in that direction. I must hasten to say that there is nothing hard and fast that the court can't say otherwise. But from the analogies that we have, this is the direction, this is a trend and what we believe to be the legal position. Um, and of course, the legal position is different to any policy decision that you may want to take, but this is what the legal position would be. Dean of Law at the University of the West Indies, Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine. The Caribbean community CARICOM is responding to the urgent needs of Haiti in the aftermath of two natural disasters. A 7.2 magnitude earthquake demolished buildings and took hundreds of lives. Haiti was also lashed by tropical storm Grace, which caused widespread flooding. More from Toussaint King English Francis of CARICOM News Time. I reiterate the community's condolences with the government and people of Haiti and to the relatives of those who lost lives in this terrible disaster. I also wish a speedy and full recovery to those of those who were injured. Haiti can be assured that the community will do all it can to assist in this time of national crisis. The toll of the powerful earthquake has climbed to over 2,100 dead and 12,000 injured. According to the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency's fourth situation report, over 300 people are missing as of August 18. At least 650,000 people are in need of emergency humanitarian assistance in the most impacted areas, representing roughly 1.6 million people. We do know that approximately 16% of the country's population has been affected and that the impact has been most felt in three of the southern departments. These are the South, Granance, and Nieps departments. The government of Haiti has listed water, tarpaulin, food, medical assistance, and sanitary kits as the priority items needed at this time. I've been in contact with Haiti's Prime Minister, uh, His Excellency Ariel Henry, in recent days, and I have pledged our support uh, for the Haitian people and would have indicated that we continue to stand in solidarity with our Haitian brothers and sisters. The required humanitarian items are available for purchase in country. Now, this is a very important point because Port-au-Prince is still operational, which means that commerce is still occurring in country. So uh, a principle that we operate by is that we do not wish to flood the country with relief items in a situation where the supply chain has not been broken and relief items can in fact be procured in country. So in this regard, the government of Haiti has guided that they're requesting cash donations. CDMA has deployed members of the CARICOM operational support team to Haiti to assist the country's emergency operations center in its coordination efforts. CARICOM member states and CDMA are collecting monetary donations to assist humanitarian efforts in Haiti. Tropical Depression Grace, which dumped heavy rains in the disaster torn country, killed four people, flooded hundreds of houses, and caused landslides. Tropical Storm Grace also affected Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, dumping heavy rainfall, downing trees, and electrical poles. And St. Lucia has also joined the CARICOM response. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, will in the coming days inform St. Lucians on how they can donate to the relief effort. In keeping with changes in international oil prices and government's application of the modified market partial petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of LPG 20, 22 and 100 pound cylinders has changed. The retail price of gasoline, diesel and kerosene remains unchanged. The price changes take effect from Monday, August 23, 2021. Gasoline and diesel remain at $13.95 per gallon. Kerosene remains unchanged at $10.06 per gallon. The 20-pound LPG cylinder decreased from $31.65 to $31.59. The 
The 22-pound cylinder also decreased from $34.81 to $34.75, and the 100-pound cylinder saw a reduction from $219.79 to $219.26. The next adjustment of the retail price of fuel products will be on Monday, September 13, 2021. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. We are working parents and we breastfed both babies exclusively. I have six years, I buy you two tetek, you two ni bon sevel. Mother's breast milk is naturally the best milk for baby. Love yourself and love your baby. Breastfeeding saves me money and it's free. Every moment I breastfeed strengthens the bond between me and my baby. I breastfed twin boys and lost all my baby fat. We were breastfed! And we have breast milk power. I am Pastor Alvin and I support breastfeeding. For more information, call the Nutrition Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness at 468-5359. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle au Creole. Merci au temps général. Merci, Madame, département qui n'est pas pour information en gouvernement cette fois-ci, passé GIS. Ensemble, depuis Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, à propos de Nouvelle en Creole, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Il y a une consultation pour cette maladie Corona. Je ne sais pas si vous avez plusieurs représentatifs de différentes organisations et agences en pays qui sont présents. La consultation, c'est pour les membres publics l'occasion là pour parler franchement concernant les opinions et les raisons que vous avez supportées et bien, pas qu'à supporter le service de la vaccine. Vous aussi avez trouvé l'occasion là pour parler les opinions concernant en quelle façon vous avez fait le programme de la vaccine pour vous. Chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belmont George, déclaré que, à parmi eux qui étaient présents, c'était les gens qui étaient contre la vaccine totalement et qui ont eu une opinion pour ce n'est pas ce qui a été fait et de toute façon, ils ont été d'accord pour prendre dans la vaccine. Dr. Belmont George a parlé aussi du secteur business qui était concerné pour travailler avec des gros supports qui ont été pour bailler avec des gros protections qui sont nécessaires en place de travail. Selon ces mois, ces divers représentatifs qui étaient présents trouvaient une semaine pour présenter un rapport à ce qui la route qui est plus meilleur pour effectivement adresser la situation au programme de la vaccine et la bataille sur la contre mauvaise maladie corona et en particulier Delta variant. Dr. Belmo George dit aussi la consultation a aidé à ouvrir ses vers et participants à dans à autant et aider les officiers de santé à comprendre primaire la route là point en bataille contre maladie corona. Dr. Stephen King, qui est le chef officier médical de passé, a fait une présentation à sur la bataille la vaccine et aussi ces risques là qui peut présenter enfin qui a existé quoi pour cette maladie corona. Selon Dr. King, il est nécessaire pour les gens qui j'ai reçu voir du raison de maladie corona pour point dose le vaccin plus vite que possible pour empêcher plus mauvais problèmes de santé affecter le pays là. Il fait comprendre plus de monde qui tombe malade, c'est moins de couches qui sont avalables et pas qu'il n'y ait pas pour les gens qui brisent l'opération faite par conséquence de la situation. Aussi, les gens qui ne brisent le service sous coup, pas qu'il ça aussi vrai. Ministre de Santé, cette ci Honorable Mose Jobat, qui a plaidé et puis citoyen cette ci pour servir bon sens pour coopérer et point de démarche et protéger les familles, les amis et le public, la, public la, généralement contre mauvais maladie corona. Le ministre de Santé a fait comprendre que 
Lee et puis premier ministre en Europe Philippe de Pierre par une pièce attention pour servir quoi vache et bien lien à ce deux personnes pour obliger yo et ça qui euh, pour obliger yo faire ça qui a bénéfice santé yo même ça nous a dit c'est tant à côté um, nous ni pour battre monde pour faire ça ni pour faire tant à côté nous pas entendre esclavage avec bail comme ça nous ca mettre la ni loi avec police là ca garder loi mais ça nous a dit nous ca m'a dit cette liste avec um, nous ni confiance en genre cette liste c'est pas tout le monde qui fait c'est ça qui pas qu'à faire là nous ça 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 nous ni pour encourager pour faire avec nous ca mettre toute cette liste pour point ça ça parce que c'est la vie nous la vie ich nous un monde qui mort avec nous pas voulu ça continuer. Dernièrement, à l'école là, on va aller l'école, l'école pour ouvrir, nous pas faire des Eh ben, nous pas financer ça qui fait des affaires l'école là, nous savent, nous avons regarder situation, un vaccin Pfizer qui 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 nous n'y a besoin, vaccin ça là, jeune monde ça prend 12 ans en montant. Avec nous qui encourage toute maman pour mener issue um, pour un vaccin parce que um, ça a une des situations, mais Um, nous avons une discussion avec le ministre de l'Éducation, avec ses officiers de l'Éducation, avec un annoncement qu'il a fait tout de suite. Le ministère de la Santé a fait les plus grands citoyens. Il a commencé à implémenter des marches pour faire assurer que la vaccine est available pour tout qui est en ordre pour recevoir. Le programme de la vaccine continue en toutes ces places-là, avec un continue en toutes ces places-là, c'est le centre en pays. Selon le rapport du de ministère de la Santé, ces semaines pour venir, service là, ces services là, vaccin n'a pas available, mais j'ai un secteur privé de facilité santé qui j'ai trouvé sélecté. Commencé lundi le 23 en mois d'août 2021, la vaccin là, c'est Pfizer, qui est available pour les personnes à l'âge de 12 ans et qu'en moutant. Pour les jeunes qui en bas de 18 ans, ils ont eu un parent pour présent et puis ils ont eu un grand de assistant qui s'est nommé la Jabat. C'est que la vaccine a protégé les enfants de maladies coronaires, en particulier la uh, Delta variant, là, qui est capable de causer des problèmes de santé qui sont très sérieux pour les jeunes. Selon nos Jean-Baptiste, je tout le temps, le programme de la vaccine n'a pas fait en tout pays, ni au qui a point d'os, et aussi ça qui n'a pas point, ni pour comprendre ce qui est très nécessaire pour avoir une proportion en plus pour capable de contrôler le mauvais. Mesdames, écoutez notre bout de nouvelle là aujourd'hui. Mon cher Monsieur, au temps pour regarder, mon cher Monsieur, invitation. Je ne peux pas encore citer qu'on se fait la vie, mais quand il pose le volant, c'est ça. La vie pose le volant. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.